Hey Damien here for Automo Superstore. On this video, it's the top five things you need to know to buy the perfect four channel amplifier. Let's get stuck in. So tip number one, decide what kind of speaker array you need to power before choosing the amplifier. That's primarily because most of the entry level and affordable four channel amplifiers will be making somewhere between 40 and 60 watts RMS per channel into a four ohm load. But when you bridge that much power, you're only gonna get around 120 to 160 watts RMS and for many subwoofers, that's not enough. So think about that. We do have models like the Sylwyn Vega or other models that will make two, three, 400 watts RMS when bridged. Uh, Pioneer's GMD 8704 and 9704 are two excellent and well-priced examples of that. But just be mindful that whatever subwoofer you choose, that the amplifier when it's bridged provides enough power. The trick there is, when bridging two channels together, each individual channel sees half the effective load of the total bridged load. So that means if your individual channels are minimum two ohm, the total bridge load has to be a four ohm. And so you need to use a single four ohm voice call subwoofer, or you could, for example, use two dual four ohm subwoofers wired in what's called series parallel, which is you wire each woofer in series to be an eight ohm woofer, and then you parallel them together to be a four ohm total load. Tip number two, now we know what kind of speaker arrangement we're gonna be installing with our amplifier. We need to choose one that's got the right crossovers to suit that speaker arrangement. And the crossovers in amplifiers tend to differ, and so it's important to make sure you've got the right crossover set up in your amplifier for the speakers you have chosen. Little side note there, if you have an aftermarket head unit that has good crossovers built in, you might be able to use the crossovers in the head unit instead of the ones in the amplifier, or you may be able to use a combination of the ones in the head unit and the amplifier to get the job done. But let's talk about the most common speaker arrangement that you'll probably do, which is a set of component speakers like this, powered off channels one and two, and then channels three and four bridged to a subwoofer of some kind. All four channel amplifiers will have a crossover setup that will allow that very basic arrangement. The second most popular way to set up a four channel amplifier would be to have two pairs of full range speakers like this, and maybe you'll have a separate mono amplifier powering your subwoofer. In that case, you'll need to have a high pass filter for both front and rear outputs that can be set somewhere from 60 or 70 hertz all the way up to 120 hertz. And again, pretty much every single four channel amplifier we sell has a crossover just like that. So nice and simple so far. There are some speaker arrangements that are a little bit more complicated though. So let's just say we still wanna run a component set, but we just wanna run one component set off a four channel amplifier without the passive crossovers. And so that means I need a crossover that can put a high pass for the tweeters somewhere between 2000 to 3000 Hertz up to 6000 Hertz as a high pass. And then I need a low pass or a band pass for the mid range from six to 3000 Hertz down to anywhere down to 70 Hertz as a band pass, cutting away the low frequencies and the high frequencies. If you wanna do that, and that's called running an active system, you need to choose an amplifier that has those specific types of crossovers. Then there's uh, what I would call a quasi-active system or a semi-active system. So let's say we have our component set again, but we add a small mid-range between the tweeters and the mid-bass drivers. We have six speakers to drive but only four channels. So what you could do, for example, is you could reintroduce your passive crossovers. These crossover at say 5,000 Hertz and we use that between the tweeters and the mid-range that gives us that crossover point. We still need a high pass for these at say two to 300 Hertz, and we need a low pass or a band pass for the mid bass drivers at the same two to 300 Hertz to get between here and here, and then one to protect this from low bass. And again, you might just be able to use a high pass, low pass in the crossover of the amplifier set at 300 Hertz to get us between here and here. And then with an aftermarket head unit, provide the high pass for the mid bass drivers. So again, a combination of crossovers built into the amplifier and the head unit will get us there. Now for tip number three, 
think about the extra additional features that you might not have thought of already, but are gonna be really handy. For example, if you are going to use a subwoofer in the system, and especially if you're connecting your amplifier to a factory head unit, a remote level controller for channels three and four is gonna be very, very handy, and not all four channel amplifiers have it. Some do have it complete in the box, some have it as an optional accessory. So check that, especially if you're running a subwoofer. Other nice things, um, concealment panels like this one here on the Serwin Vega to hide all the switches and stuff. That's quite a nice thing, I like that. This Alpine amplifier here is their entry level four channel. It has panels that go over here and here that hide all of the wiring and connectors and all the switches. That makes it nice and neat as an installation. That's a cool thing as well. I like insert style terminals like the Alpine has here and the Selwyn Vega has here used on the mid to high spec amplifiers. They're easier to use and they're more secure for holding your cable and avoid accidental wiring shorts. For signal processing, a lot of four channel amplifiers will have something like bass boost, uh, similar to what you'll find on a mono amplifier. Uh, this Alpine actually has mid bass boost and that boosts a slightly higher frequency in the range, probably handy for things like six by nines. Um, but you'll have bass boost in other amplifiers that'll be boosting at around 40 hertz. Just be mindful, it doesn't make the amplifier any more powerful at that frequency. In effect, you're just boosting one frequency and so you need to be mindful and bring the input sensitivity down about the same amount you turn the boost up to avoid clipping distortion at that frequency. Besides that, you might find something handy like Alpine has here. It's an input switch and it allows you to turn this amplifier on or off in different ways depending on the installation. So if you've connected this to a factory head unit that has no traditional 12 volt trigger on and off, that's very common in a lot of modern cars where you've got especially push button start cars. This amplifier can turn on either just looking at the input voltage to the power terminals, can turn on and off by sensing the cars on and off. It could also turn on and off from the music signal coming in to speaker level input, uh, or you can even just use a traditional triggered input with a 12 volt accessory source. So a number of different features to consider, but some of those might make your installation really handy or make your life a bit easier. Number four, think about the amplifier and how it's designed and where it places its wiring and its controls and how that relates to where it's gonna go inside the car. Also think about the physical size of the amplifier and where it's going to fit. Take these two Selwyn Vegas for example, I can fit these two amplifiers, a multi-channel and a mono, in the same space as this one amplifier. And so if I've got really limited space, maybe investing in an ultra compact class D, which can be just as powerful as the physically larger amplifiers, might be worth doing because it makes life a bit easier. Also, you can mount them closer to the battery, which may mean that you need a slightly smaller wiring kit, and that would also save you money there. Then there are the location of the controls and the inputs for wiring and RCAs and stuff like that compared to where it physically sits in the car. This amplifier here, if I have a really low seat over that in the car, I can't get to the control. So if I want to adjust something, I have to place this where I can slide the seat forward, or maybe I have to take the seat out altogether to adjust these controls. But in another installation, it might be a lot easier to get to these type of controls depending on where it is, say on the back wall of a dual cab. And so you've got to think about that. Other amplifiers like this Alpine here, they put all the connections on one end, the speaker and RCA inputs on the other, and the controls on the other. And so they're the common ways that they're designed. You've got to think about these things to choose the right amplifier for your installation. Now for tip number five. We know everything we need to know to buy the perfect four channel amplifier. We just need to add the right power kit. Power kits tend to come in two different types and from a couple of different suppliers. We have Air Pro, we have Stinger, and we have Selwyn Vega. Uh, here's a good example. So these are two eight gauge kits from Air Pro. This one's the Max Core kit and it comes with eight gauge power earth, fuse holder, a fuse, and some trigger wire. It does not come with RCAs though. This kit here, it's very similar. It has the power and earth and fuse holder and fuse, but it does come with two sets of five meter long RCAs. The benefit of this is it's a bit more affordable. The benefit of this is you can buy the RCAs to the length you need. And so if you mount your amplifier, say under the seat, and you only need maybe a two or three meter RCA run, it might be better for you just to buy those RCAs separate. So there's the two different options there. 
Besides that, these kits are available also in four gauge or two gauge, depending on how large and how powerful your amplifiers are going to be. Here's a chart that shows you the amount of watts RMS of amplifier power in total that you'll have, the distance your amplifiers are from the battery, and the recommended gauge of power that I'd say you should use, and that's from the battery to where the amplifiers are going to be located. A really good idea is to just use one of the larger kits and run a large single power run from the battery to where the amplifiers are, and then maybe add distribution there for say a smaller run of power cable from close to the amplifiers to their terminals. So now you're equipped with everything you need to know to buy the perfect four channel amplifier. Down below will be a link where you'll find a smoking deal on whatever model you wanna buy as always at Automotive Superstore. While you're here, like and subscribe. See you next time.